I've always just loved the cars. They are beautiful cars. They're clean, and he's put his heart and soul into them. All of these cars are in impeccable condition. These cars are an important part of automotive history. Well, when I was a kid, my dad had a little shop over on the west side of Charlotte, and he would go to the salvage sales, and he'd buy Datsun Z. My senior year in high school, I would go to school to about noon, and go to my dad's shop, and I'd work on Z cars, and just really fell in love with these old cars. I feel like I know every nut and bolt on them. Before Mike, I was never big into cars, but the more he got into cars, the more he started teaching me about, you know, certain cars, and why you buy rarity. He gets so excited about it that, um, you know, it makes me excited. There is one holy grail in the Z car collecting, and that is a Fair Lady 432. The car originally called Fair Lady because the uh, management from Nissan Datsun went to see my Fair Lady and thought, this is a cool name, let's call our car that. And they did. The 432 Monica got its name from four vowels per cylinder, three carburetors, and two cams which improves the induction system. It's originally an American design. The head of Nissan USA decided that they needed a worthy successor to the 1600 series, to the 2000 series that had been so very successful for them. And so they started making clay models. And when they made the clay models, they made them around the S20 engine, which was the product of a merger between a company called Prince and Nissan. It was actually taken in-house by Nissan. And they said, okay, we're going to build some for the Japanese market, and we're gonna take this car back to the United States. So that ended up birthing two vehicles. Number one was the Fair Lady 432, which would become in the domestic market the original 240Z that we know so well. There are only 200 of them built in 1970. There's only 400 all the whole time. That was 50 years ago. So finding one was really hard. Nissan made 500 cars with a 1969 production date. Of those 500 cars, there's supposedly 150 that are in the registry now. And, you know, the rest of them, you know, just pretty much dissolve. We worked on this thing for eight years, and finally, you know, I did all I could do to it, and I, then I sent it out to my real good friend Rob Fuller with Z Car Garage, and really just took it to the next level. When we look at the restoration of some of these cars, I have to say. I am blown away by the quality of the cars. When the car was introduced into the United States, it had to have smog emissions equipment added in hindsight. And the hose clips that we use during that modification for the emission system are of a different color, silver as opposed to the gold cadmium color that, that we used back in Japan. When the car has been restored, it has used the bright color clips on the smog emission system. That tells me everything. That's gonna tell you about the rest of the restoration on the car. If that's right, you're onto a winner. This car has not been shown, so it's a great opportunity for somebody to get this car and actually take it to concourses because it's a concourse restoration. In 1996, they were building the 300ZX, but when those cars came, they, they knew that they were gonna be minimum two years getting a 350Z onto the street. Well, it actually ended up taking a lot longer than that. And when it did, they decided that to keep the Z car name alive, that they would go around the Southwest and buy as, as unrusty a Z cars as they could find. Nissan were buying the cars back, restoring them to original factory condition, and then giving them back to the dealer, putting warranties back on the car as a brand new car, and selling it from the dealerships. The little badge on the console is what makes it special. And there was a, a shop called Pierre Z. He did most of the restorations and, uh, you know, he did this car and, and did, just did a phenomenal job. And uh, it's pretty much brand new. The 10th anniversary car, and that's a brand new 43 year old car. There's only 500 of these cars made and they went to the top 500 dealers in the United States. Jerry Lane, the dealer who had this car, decided he's not gonna sell this car. After 40 years, he's passed away, the car is in his son's hands, and he says, look, it's, you know, we've, we've enjoyed it, we've preserved this history, it's time to let it go. It ends up with Mike and his family, 
it's gone from 12 miles to 26 miles. This is probably the lowest mileage Datsun in existence today. The 50th anniversary car is a great car. It's 9,300 miles, but I had bought that car for my wife for her, her 60th birthday. When I met Mike, I had a Z, I had a 300 that I loved, loved the car. But when I met Mike, two boys came along, so sold it. And then my 60th birthday, I get the Z card almost exactly like what I had, except 10 times better. It was the first year of the 300ZX with the turbocharger. It's, it's the original tires and everything on it, and um, it's uh, really special. So it's 1977 and Datsun says, we need to do something that's fresh, that's fun, that's vibrant, let's sell some more cars. And they thought, well, let's come out with a really cool version that has sunburst yellow. And so they thought, we're gonna build a car around this. We're gonna call it the 280 Zap, three Zs. It's a cool car. The guys that did the restoration on it did a really, really nice job. 1977, 78, you had this building of the Pontiac Trans Am brand. Now stay with me here because this matters to Datsun. By 1978, 79, the black and gold Pontiac Trans Am was it. At that point in time, there had never been a black Z car. And in 1978, they came out with a car called the Black Pearl. It's got the original paint. It's got the original stripes on it. That striking kit is really hard to come by. You know, nobody can seem to do it exactly right, but it won best uh, 280Z at Z-Con a few years ago in Atlanta. It's, it's been a great car. Some people would say that with the 280ZX, they really got away from their original intent, and some people don't like them, but you gotta remember they built the car for a different purpose. This was no longer just intended to be a small sports car in the truest sense. This was now a grand touring machine. That is one of my favorite cars because, I, I number one, I love the wheels on that car, those turbine-looking wheels. I mean, to me, that, that was the best wheel that they ever made. This car I found down in Miami it's a 30-some thousand original mile car, uh, mostly original paint. I don't think that we couldn't find any tape marks or anything on it to where it had been painted. And that, that was the last year of the 280. You know, they went to the, the 83, 280, then the 84, 300. It's a really cool car. The cars are in phenomenal condition. And what Mike and Debbie have done with their cars is truly phenomenal. I can't praise this collection enough. I love it because of its rarity, it speaks for itself. What this collection has really got going for it is it really kind of takes it from the start in 1969 and goes through the first four iterations of the car. If you're looking to start your own collection, enhance what you have, you know, these are great cars to do that with. He has a lot to do in here, and that's some of the problem now. It's he's one person, and there's a lot of cars there's not enough time in the day sometimes to treat them and drive them like he wants to. It's been fun, you know, and, and we just, you know, we're just ready to do some other stuff and that's the only reason we're, we're willing to turn loose from them. I, I've, I've done well with Meekum. We, we bought a bunch of cars from Meekum. I just knew they would do a great job. It's time for another proprietor to have them for a while and uh, he'll be just as proud of them as I am.